So the idea is that there's two kinds of overhead in business. There's static overhead and there's dynamic overhead. And dynamic overhead is overhead that actually actively generates a profit for the business. Mostly things involving sales, things involving marketing will be examples of dynamic overhead, right? You add more marketing, you add more sales, you add better marketing, you add better sales, your business is gonna grow. It's dynamic, right? And then there's static overhead, which is, it doesn't, it doesn't dynamically add to the revenue or add to the profitability of the business, right? Examples would be the furniture. Once everyone's got a desk and a chair, you know, giving your top producer two chairs doesn't make them more of a top producer, right? Um, electricity. You know, once you have all the electricity you need to run the office, it's not like you can call the power company and say, hey, I want to increase the profits of this place, pump more electricity into this office, right? It, it's static, right? It doesn't grow the business. Um, and then, you, and then that kind of connects up to a concept of blue collar versus white collar versus entrepreneurial thinking, right? So most blue collar workers, most blue collar people, and I come from a blue collar background, so I'm not judging it badly, it's just it's a different level of awareness. They, they're unaware of concepts and ideas and I'm not saying that they're unaware, like they can't pass a test. I'm not saying they can't define the word, but I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not a, it's not a regular factor in their daily decisions about the choices they make no uh, around concepts like having equity in a business because they don't own a business, right? So having equity in a business means nothing. Um, having an investment portfolio, they don't have an investment portfolio. Um, having insurance portfolios, um, having a client list, these having the the, 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 intellect, the value of the intellectual property of a business. Like, these are not things that factor into that, that a blue collar person is using to evaluate a person's success because these things are mostly intangible and invisible to the naked eye. And you have to have politically incorrect, impolite conversation to evaluate whether that exists in a person's life or not, right? So you can see a person sitting over there and he or she could have a net worth that eclipses all of ours all together in the form of a stock portfolio and intellectual property and insurance portfolio. And, and things like that, but you would never know it without having, without asking about it, right? But since most blue collar workers are told that it's impolite to talk about these concepts and these ideas, because they're not given a manual on how to manage money and how to, they're not given the money, the, the money manual, the money, the operating manual for money, they don't have, they don't have these conversations, right? And so, what they're left to, what they're left to, is they evaluate, they judge a person's success based on the house they live in, not the equity of the house they live in, the car they drive, not whether the car has any equity in it or not, the 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 the, the size of their office, not whether the office is actually profitable or not, how many people they have working for them, not whether those people are actually productive or not. Um, and so, you know, when friends come to visit the firm, they say, oh, um, you know, Beth and Dana are doing really great. Well, how do you know they're doing really great? Oh, they've got a big office. They got a bunch of staff. They live in nice houses. They drive nice cars. They have nice furniture. That's all static overhead, right? A more sophisticated, a more educated, a more enlightened, a more mature entrepreneur would say, well, they seem to be doing well, but I don't know for sure. I'm not going to make any judgments because 
I haven't looked at their balance sheet. I don't know whether they have any equity in their business or not. I don't know if they're. I'm sorry. How much debt do they have? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how much if the business has any debt. I don't know if the business is. I don't know if the, all those employees actually work for them or if they're subletting out the space. I don't know if those employees are actually profitable or not. Profitable or not. I don't know if all of that stuff that I see is is really generating a profit, right? And they look at, oh, their house. Well, yeah, they have a beautiful home. It's a beautiful home, no doubt, but I don't know if the home is paid for or not paid for. I don't know if they if they're living on like the last gas of an arm that's about to pop up and their monthly payment's gonna double, or if they own it free and clear. You know, that house, that car they're driving, I don't know if that car is 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 owned free and clear, or if the car is leased, or if the business just gives the car to them as a business deduction expense. And the problem with all of this is inexperienced entrepreneurs, particularly those of us who come from a blue collar background, we allow ourselves to be judged and evaluated by others based on blue collar criteria. So when the business starts to have problems, the first thing that we are willing to cut and sacrifice is the dynamic overhead, right? Because we're embarrassed about losing the static overhead. Because we don't want our friends and family and colleagues to say, oh, you know, Dana and Beth were doing really well, but then they must have had some problems because they had to downsize their office and cut their staff. And and they're like celebrating because yeah, we got to cut all this fucking overhead and downsize our shitty office that was just wasting money and fire half our unproductive staff and we were able to double up on our dynamic overhead and we're more profitable than ever. But unless they're gonna say that and, and say to their friends and family who come to visit, hey, let me show you my balance sheet and my P&L and show you the real economics of my business. I see I'm, I see I'm struck a nerve. Yeah, there you just feel it. So it's like this, Comparing yourself to other people, allowing yourself to be judged and evaluated by other people. And if you're gonna allow yourself to be judged or evaluated by other people, at least you say, you know what? If you're gonna judge me, let's agree on the criteria on which you're gonna judge me, right? Oh, you wanna judge me based on the size of my office? You wanna judge me based on the headcount of my, of my business? You wanna judge me based on the, si uh, on the size of my house or my zip code? I don't agree to that. I agree to be judged by the, by the, by the labor cost ratio of my staff because my tiny little staff that I figured out how to downsize is three, is three times more profitable for me than that bloated group of losers that I used to drag along with me, right? <laughs> And my tiny little office that you're gonna tell me what a loser I am and talk behind my back about, oh yeah, you know, he had to downsize for the big office and the little office. You know what? My tiny little wildly profitable staff now occupies one third of the square footage that my previous unproductive staff used to waste. And now I've got more equity and more, you get my point I'm trying to make here? So you gotta be careful how you compare yourself to other people and who you allow yourself to be compared to. And then of course, you know, you have the conversation that no one's actually ever gonna really have in the real world, which is, let's talk about how you're gonna judge me. Right, because then the next thing is, okay, you're gonna judge me that I have a $2 million business and not a $3 million business. All right, well, you know what? I can be away from my $2 million business for six consecutive months with emergency access only, and the business doesn't miss a beat, whereas the other person with a $3 million business can't be away from the office for three days without things falling apart. 
mean, there's so many different ways that you, you can evaluate the success of a business and what it ultimately comes down to, you gotta make up your own decision for what you're gonna judge your, the success of your business by and tell everyone else to take a flying fucking leap because it doesn't matter what they think. So I've heard you talk